I think I might have a bit of a problem here. Epic Fear. Wacky world of multimedia J. So, I must be old because once upon a time I remember mechanical keyboards being rich kid toys for PC gamers with money to burn. They were always over $100 for anything decent, and it was a total disaster. And uh, the rest of us were stuck with membrane keyboards, uh, and we made the best of it. But now, thanks to changes in the market and everything, the prices on mechanical keyboards have come down so much that you can actually get an entry-level mechanical keyboard for around the same cost as a decent membrane keyboard these days. Uh, so I've been having a little bit of fun, of course, since the original ASIO, which is still my main keyboard to this day. But uh, let's just say we've kind of been taking some liberties with that. And now our latest Ola F2088 is gonna be just a little bit different from these because it's a Father's Day present for my dad. I figure if I'm having so much fun with all this mechanical keyboard, light up keyboard stuff, why not let my dad have a little fun too? In a not so garish PC gaming style, that might better suit his more traditional keep it simple way of doing things on the computer. First, the ASIO MGK, my main keyboard of choice, picked this up during the pandemic lockdowns. This is the only semi-expensive mechanical keyboard I have, and they're not made anymore, and it probably costs more because I bought it from one of the last places I could actually get it. Corner of some Office Depot warehouse somewhere, I don't know. Anyways, brown switches, I have uh, HyperX puddings for keycaps here. Definitely a clacker of a keyboard, and it's uh, showing off its RGB through this nice little rainbow mode and stuff like that. However, I don't really I don't use it in rainbow mode, I just set it to solid blue to match its membrane predecessor. Plus, my gaming setup is always very, very blue team. The other Ola F2088 blue switch keyboard originally came with typewriter keycaps, but I swapped them out for regular keycaps. Definitely a clicker of a keyboard. Click, 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 click. Sounds like an old-fashioned IBM type thing or whatever. And you can't stay quiet with these no matter what. Because the click happens no matter how lightly you press the keys. For those people that are that nostalgic for the 80s. But I find it pretty fun to type on with some HyperX puddings on it now. As opposed to the other keycaps I was using earlier. But this rainbow snake mode isn't what I normally use it for. So let's hit this three seconds and it turns into rainbow. We push it one more time and now it's solid on. At which point you notice that the LEDs on this are a little flickery. Especially when viewed in the camera. It's not just the camera that's making these look like 60 hertz flicker here. Uh, these keys actually do look a little flickery in real life as well. So I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you should just turn it off. At which point it becomes a cute little two-tone keyboard. But what's the point? Have some lights to it. It's my secondary keyboard, obviously, and I don't like making YouTube videos with it. So we'll just turn it off for now and turn it back on off camera and uh, set this back. It's basically like when I used to have a Microsoft natural keyboard that I'd swap in from time to time for long typing sessions, except it's blue switch. It's fun to type on, fun to type on, terrible, terrible, terrible to game with. Lastly, the Rosewill Blitz K55. Pretty decent brown switch keyboard, cheaper than the ASIO, but it feels very similar because it has brown switches, has a similar noise, and the keys are a little looser, but I think a lot of that comes down to the keycaps. This would probably feel similar to my main keyboard if I had some puddings on it instead of the default ones that it came with. Unfortunately, as you can see, it's only semi-RGB. The Rosewell branding and all of the keys that are around the edge, like the G keys for macros and the M keys for macros, as well as the media keys, and well, this doesn't have any lights on it, but it's a slide wheel thingy instead of a volume knob. That's all locked to red. 
My color is blue, so the best I can come up with is a Super Mario or police looking red and blue scheme, which I have to set through software because the keys that are supposed to change the pattern on the keyboard, they seem to not go back in the other direction or they're just too complicated to remember. So it doesn't really get me. I mean, function end. Nope, doesn't do very much. <laughs> I have to set it through software for this one. So not the biggest fan in the world of it. But it makes for an interesting uh, keyboard to sub in, and a very similar feeling one to sub in if I have to work on the other one. Although I could always get an Ola with brown switches to sub in instead. Uh, just have to figure out what to do with this one. And there it is with everything set to solid blue. Although because it's RGB, we can actually use the software to set it to any color anybody wants, except for the special keys along the edge and the branding. It's kept as red. The problem I have with these macro programmable gaming buttons or whatever is you're trying to do things by touch. You go to hit the control key, which is normally in the corner of the board. So you feel for the controller of the corner of the board and you hit this instead of this. So I, I would often set this as the control key just for the heck of it. But I just can't get used to having extra buttons beyond the edge of the standard layout. Especially if I play PC games based on touch typing to not scrunch my fingers on the WASD or do this, but if I just touch type the game instead, I'm constantly reaching for a control or a shift, a caps lock or a tab, and I don't want to go off and hit a gaming macro button by mistake. So as much as some people might enjoy this type of keyboard, it just doesn't do the trick for me, not in the slightest. And now we've come to the mystery box. Oh yes, with the goofy looking face that's staring deep into your soul or whatever. The Ola F2088, the F2088. Not to be confused with Cyberpunk 2077, but uh, either way, it's from a dark corner of Amazon like the rest of these cheap mechanical keyboards. Uh, except this one had a little gimmick to it. I was looking at the pictures and this one was referred to as a Mac keyboard. And I was like, really? Is that all it takes nowadays for something to be called a Mac keyboard? Is to uh, just have plain white lights instead of rainbow RGB LEDs and stuff like that? So a plain old fashioned keyboard with light up keys will be called a Mac keyboard nowadays? Then again, Macs nowadays include things like the Mac Pro, which looks like a freaking cheese grater. So, uh, I don't know. Some Apple fans are going to have to tell me how all of this works with the so-called Mac style. I, I just like to think it's like a light mode rebellion against all of this dark mode stuff that's out there these days. All right, one slider tab, and it opens like a keyboard box, as you'd expect. It's in bubble wrap. And I'm not, I'm not gonna take it out of the bubble wrap on camera because I wanna preserve the bubble wrap as best as possible. So you got your keyboard and the cord's even still wrapped up. We're gonna get a USB extension cable in order to use it over here. Magnetic wrist rest in the bubble wrap, key puller, instruction manual, and a thing for it to rest against, stuff like that. Now this, however, has black switches, which are linear switches, which don't have the tactile bump where you feel like you're pushing past something if you slowly push the button down. Overall though, it feels pretty good. My dad though does not touch type. He's a two finger typist, so he bottoms out keys all the time. So I'm thinking the increased actuation force of black switches versus red switches or any of the other switches I've used might not be so much of a problem for him, but let's get it out of the bubble wrap and resist the urge to pop any of it <laughs> because it's bubble wrap. <laughs> All right, so this so-called Mac keyboard, uh, it has nice large print letters, so they should light up quite nicely for him. He may not even need his glasses for these or something like that, but these do feel different. It almost feels kind of like a membrane keyboard because of the larger actuation force needed, but there isn't a smushy bottoming out of these keys like there would be, there would be with a membrane keyboard. So, relatively quiet, no mandatory clicks. Yeah, should be quieter than the brown switches, which might be good for him typing up emails late at night when my stepmother is going to sleep. So that's one of the things I had in mind for this. Now, let's point the light away, or better yet, just turn the light off completely. We have it plugged into a USB extension cable, so you don't have to unravel the cord. We just plug it right into 2010's monolith. 
and contact. It boots via little swirly lights and does this and lights up. <laughs> Looks like it has the same flickery-ish lights as its other cheaper counterparts, but I don't know if he'll notice that or not. But there are options. It's the same as the other Ola keyboard. All that's different is the switches, the keys, and the color of the lights. So this is the so-called Mac keyboard. It actually, I'm surprised it doesn't have an Apple key or anything that has Windows keys. So I thought Macintosh had still had Apple commands or something, but I might be a little outdated. It might look a little blue because the lighting around it is blue, but the light specifically is white. So plain light up keyboard with large keys that my dad will probably like, and it can stay relatively quiet when he's typing stuff and no more smushy membranes. Let me actually do a sound test running a character around an ESO with this keyboard with and without sound, just to see how quiet it is as a gaming keyboard. Actually, before we do that, let's check out the rainbow button. Same as the other Ola keyboards, but uh, yeah, it's got a little pulse mode. It's got some other weird things that it does, swirling, but it, it's, it's just one color now, so just plain white key, so it's not as interesting as it would otherwise be. But uh, <laughs> it's got like ripple modes and other stuff like that, and it even has the snake mode, but it's in black and white. So where is it? There's another snake mode. No, it's sine wave mode that I'm thinking of here. That's not it. Da -da 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 -da. See, around we go. There we go. <laughs> oh man. Actually, I guess you could say that sine wave mode is like white snake mode or something. Here I go again on my, yeah, whatever. Let's just leave him on. I'm sure he'll use it in simple, everything always on mode so you can have the keys light up for him. Let's give it a little sound test through ESO. Actually, we do a sound test right here, too, although there'll be some vibration noise that's picked up by the camera. Yeah, these have linear switches. They feel different than the tactile bumps. My dad hasn't dealt with any tactile bumps, though. Linear as in you can slowly push it down to the bottom at a... Well, let's do it with the other hand. Slowly push the keys down at a fixed speed, and the resistance is always the same. So maybe, uh, you know, you might like the response or not, but I mean, this is perfectly doable. But it does feel more like a sliding analog button board. Now, he's going to be two-finger typing, so it's going to feel more like this. Then when I get involved as a touch type... Uh, the, I do feel the increased actuation force versus the other switches that I use. But I think because he touch types and he probably bottoms everything out, or no, he two finger types and he bottoms everything out, he's probably not going to mind. Heck, he probably slams the heck out of the keyboard he has anyways. He cut meat for 45 years, so he's got bigger hands than me. Undoubtedly, he doesn't mind clunking stuff. And he's also been doing yard work since he retired, so I don't think uh, he's exactly someone who would type with any big amount of finesse. So, all right, let's go hook it up and play some ESO with it. Okay, so-called Mac keyboard is hooked up with some ESO. I'm just going to do this one-handed and have my guy run around uh, Panther Fang, the Panther Fang throne room like a moron here. But yeah, the linear switches uh, do feel a little bit less clunky to activate when uh, you push them as buttons as opposed to typing with them because you're not hitting the tactile bump. So it's a little bit smoother, but it's a small difference at the very... Uh, the very well, we can actually turn the UI off. We don't. We're not doing anything, so just gonna run around here and yeah, not bad actually. A little bit of key noise, of course, like there is everything else. But you can be quiet with this, just like you can be quiet with brown switches. Still, though, I don't know. I, I just I'm too used to tactile switches now. When I go back to linear anything, it kind of reminds me of a membrane keyboard, even if, even if it doesn't get smushy. I think that's because membrane keyboards, uh, well, some of them are actually made to be a little bit less smooshy than they otherwise would be, but at the end of the day, rubber is rubber. Unless, of course, you're one of those weirdos that buys O-rings for your mechanical switches because they'll sell everything on Amazon these days, including stuff that makes your, uh, that makes your uh, mechanical keyboard not so loud. <laughs> even if it does make it feel more rubbery, which kind of defeats the purpose of going back to a mechanical board. All right, let's use this handy dandy volume wheel to turn the volume all the way down. And let's just uh, creak creak in the chair and let's listen to the keyboard noise 
without any noise, other sound whatsoever, except the computer. It's kind of like the browns. It's kind of as soft as the browns. Just needs a little more force to push them down. But the good thing is you have the option of being very gentle to keep it quiet. Of course, if you want to be even more gentle, just get a membrane keyboard. If, the, if you want a button board where things are like, you know, hitting the D-pad on an old-fashioned game controller, you definitely want to go uh, membrane for that. Spam heals! Spam heals! Because there's nothing to attack. I think, though, for what my dad uses it for, he'll probably like this. Uh, he'll probably... Pff, whoops! Just blew an ultimate move for nothing. <laughs> I think, though, for what my dad uses uh, computers for, which is mostly email and poking around on the internet, this will be just fine for him. He doesn't need fancy colors or anything. But uh, if his keyboard is getting a little worn out and smushy, then uh, he'll be fine. I just got to show him how to use a key puller and... And also that he can clean and lubricate the switches if he gets some contact uh, cleaner like Deoxid or something. Just something that's not electrically conductive. And he can wash the keycaps as well or get new keycaps to make the keyboard feel like new anytime he wants. And still keep all the old features. Not bad for uh, black switches. There we go. We're repacked and we're ready to go to the folks' place. Ready to go off to the folks' place. For a nice happy Father's Day, I'm also going to be taking the other keyboard with me just to introduce my dad to the various kinds of switches. I don't know if he's really done very much in terms of reading about how mechanical keyboards are and stuff, but I think he might get a kick out of the blue switches at least, but I think he'll prefer the black switches the most because he basically two-finger types and everything. But yeah, might as well. I mean, keep him in the loop on all this so he can know that his son is still managing to stay in the loop with technology despite this being like the desert for people with tech skills where everything's warehouses and Walmart and only occasionally does a tech opportunity come along. Unless of course I want to go running off to the city and dealing with increased cost of living, more traffic, more nonsense, the whole nine yards, just people being people. Either way, this thing is ready to go to the folks' place. Okay, lastly is an encore to this keyboard palooza. Let's revisit the incredibly retro at this point HP keyboard that I picked up last summer for the retro setup. And so I'm going to have some use for this later this summer. It's been 20 years since I played Elder Scrolls Morrowind. And after I conclude the tech videos for the season, I want to switch off to game streaming and do like 20 years since I played Morrowind get back into Morrowind and play it again and see if I can, you know, rekindle the magic, so to speak. Part of that is going to involve using the original peripherals that I played Morrowind with, which is one of these keyboards, and my original IntelliMouse Explorer 3 from college, the silver one. So let's get everything cleaned up here. Let's take a look at this thing. I never did open this thing to see how dirty it got with the last owner, but it's interesting. You can still find these retro keyboards on eBay. They cost pretty much the same as modern keyboards. Now, if you get new old stock and stuff like that, so it's, it's pretty cool. Although because this is old, it's PS2. So I wound up getting one of these monoprice PS2 to USB adapters. Had to get a dongle with an actual processor thing in it because the regular one that just converts the plug there wasn't enough power to power the keyboard, so the, the lights flickered for a second and it turned off whenever I plugged it in over USB. But something that's an actual dongle that's meant to power more than one device can actually support the keyboard plus the additional features, even though most of them don't work, without special software that was only written for Windows 98. So, uh, yeah. Never really got to talk about this, but this is back in the days of yore when HP actually spelled out Hewlett Packard on all of their stuff. <laughs> this is kind of the ancestor of the kinds of keyboards I would use nowadays because I love keyboards with volume wheels so I can have a volume knob for my computer. <laughs> I've used volume buttons and the slider thingies, but there's nothing like a good old-fashioned knob so you can turn up the volume and turn down the volume like an old stereo or a computer. In a way, I was kind of ahead of my time back in the early 2000s, looking forward to a day when computers would serve the role of home theater systems and home stereos and 
hi-fis and stuff along those lines. Standard keys, membrane, insane membrane keys, the space bar feels weird. Uh, it's not the worst membrane keyboard in the world, but it's still membrane, so... The, the, the keys don't actually sound all that bad, although they do sound kind of membrane-y. A standby button, which in the days of Windows XP, you could hit the standby button and it would pop open a menu and you could choose, and I could hit standby U to shut down the computer, standby R to restart the computer, or standby S to go into standby. <laughs> It used to be a help thing for HP, a thing that took you to HP's website or online help or CD, CD-ROM help program, whatever it was. Two programmable shortcut buttons that were keys, so if you're feeling around for the control key playing a game, you don't accidentally hit stuff like that. Find documents, print documents, and fax documents. Shows how old this is. Go on the internet, and this would light up when you were connected over dial-up. I mean, it would be on all the time if you had broadband and a web browser open. Shopping, entertainment, finance, search. Ladies and gentlemen, it is still a hick town. <laughs> Epic fear. Another idiot redlining going 25 miles an hour on our lovely country roads that are too narrow to go real fast without taking out someone's porch. Uh, but we continue. We'll leave that in. Search people and open your email by this. The media keys I know worked with Winamp and there was a mute button and of course your volume knob and stuff. Not bad for PS2. <laughs> Creak. All right, let's uh, grab a Phillips head screwdriver and see what the insides of this thing look like. I've had this for about a year. It's been collecting dust and I never opened it to see what was there from the previous owner. Although because it's a membrane keyboard, I can actually wash the entire top of the keyboard like a dish if this comes apart the way I think it does. Whoa! This thing is mint! Absolutely mint! I don't know, was it even used at the last place? It's like got some wear on the top, but it is absolutely mint and spotless. This isn't like, you know, those consoles from like DK Oldies or anything, where people open them up and they're like, Huh, there's dust everywhere, there's cat hair everywhere, this is gross, they didn't open this, they didn't clean it. This is mint. I'm not gonna bother touching any of this other stuff. I'm gonna leave everything attached. We're just gonna use, we're just gonna use the key puller to pull the key caps and just wash those to make this thing feel better. Wow! <laughs> That's great for eBay, I'll tell you that much. Ah, there we go. There's your proof that this is second hand. <laughs> oh, we can knock out the dust bunnies and then probably put some uh, cleaning putty where the uh, food residue and crumbs are. And I got all the keycaps out so we can put some soapy water in there. And the fun part is, since I have the bigger of these pantry containers, close the lid. Shake them clean. <laughs> Do a wash cycle and a rinse cycle with soapy water and regular water. So when you buy the storage containers that I've been using for these types of things from Walmart, you get two ones that are big enough for a set of keycaps, and you get one of these that's big enough for keycaps with a bunch of extra space. I think we'd use these, just wash them that way. Soapy water to start and then water water afterwards, and then any that need any scrubbing, go over them afterwards and see how nice everything looks. Yeah, let's uh, get rid of the dust bunnies and see what we can do about the food residue here. I do remember taking one of these completely apart in college just to see how it went together and clean it up. But I, I just remember it being too much of a hassle and not really worth it if you could avoid it. Newer membrane keyboards like the Digital Media Pro are a lot simpler to work with. Done! That took forever. But man, clean keys always feel great. This is a deeper clean than I ever did in college. Still a membrane keyboard though. Nothing's ever going to stop this from being a membrane keyboard. There's still rubber domes underneath all of this, but it's cleaner and the keys are cleaner. And even the keys with some gunk on them now no longer have gunk on them and it's amazing for what it is. How did I not give myself carpal tunnel with, you know, smooshy membrane keys, typing out all those college reports <laughs> back in those days? Like, I just can't believe I would spend hours typing out term papers and stuff on this thing. Ah, you Zoomers are spoiled with your $30 mechanical keyboards that feel way, way, way better than this. 
but you cannot deny the retro appeal of this keyboard, especially if I'm playing like old 2000s games and stuff. Plus, when used as a game controller, as a membrane, the keys are basically buttons, so they make significantly less noise than a lot of switches when you're not when you're just hitting one at a time. Da da da. You know, space bar is probably the loudest out of all of it. But some things, you know, don't change. I still use keyboards with volume knobs and extra buttons all these years later. And my dad's about to get a keyboard that has a volume knob as well. All right, that's the fun part of this. Now let's put everything in the old college backpack. I think I'm actually going to take everything, including this keyboard, out to the folks' place just to show him, you know, where we've come from. <laughs> He'd probably get a kick out of seeing this keyboard again, or some one like it anyways. I don't still have the original one from 2000, but it'll be interesting to see what he thinks when he considers this is what I started out on, and even when it's all clean, it's still mushy. And then, uh, yeah, now we got stuff like this nowadays. I can't believe I spent... $50 for a membrane keyboard once upon a time, and you can get mechanical keyboards around the same price. <sighs> Mature technology, baby. Get a big enough critical mass and enough people buying it, and you can make anything affordable. Now to figure out how I'm going to transport all of these keyboards over, especially the gift keyboard, <laughs> for tomorrow's get-together. Oh, what the heck. I needed a duffel bag to fit those keyboards. It's gonna look like I'm trying to move back in when I go visit the folks' place. Ugh, the things I'll do to be a good son on Father's Day. Oh well, till next time, this is Multimedia J, signing off. Thanks for stopping by.